Hello everyone, I am Georgia. Today I will talk about the paper shape assembly. Let's first look at the motivation of this paper. 3D models of human-made objects are more in demand than ever. However, the cost of manually creating 3D content cannot meet the increasing demand. So one way to solve the problem is to build models that can generate high-quality 3D shape objects. An ideal generative model would produce plausible output geometry, capture a wide range of shape variations, and use an interpretable representation, which a user can edit later. There have been some prior works trying to solve this problem, but none of them can achieve all of these features. Basically, there are two types of models in the prior works. One is the procedural model. It can construct the geometry structure by structure, like in this figure. The merit is that it can produce high-quality geometry and it is interpretable and editable. But it is difficult for procedural models to capture a wide range of shape variations, and to create a good procedural model is as difficult as modeling an object by hand. The other way is deep generative models. They can learn to generate 3D shapes directly from data. However, the quality is not guaranteed. There are always some noises, and the representations are also hard to edit. By comparing the two ways, the authors found that the two types of models have complementary strengths. If you combine them together, we may get a better way to generate 3D shapes. To achieve this, the authors first designed the assembly language of shapes. By using the language, program can produce 3D shapes like a procedure model. Then they train a generative model to generate the language program. The generative model ensures the ease of training and the structure variability, and the shape assembly language ensures the quality and editability of the output 3D shapes. The problem setting is that train a hierarchical sequence variation autoencode model to generate the domain specific language programs that represent the novel high quality 3D shapes. This is part one of the approach. The first is to define the language shape assembly. The input of the pipeline is a large data set of hierarchical 3D product graphs. Nodes are connected by edge that denote the physical product attachment. They can also be connected by edge that denote hierarchy relationships. At the leaf level, atomic parts are represented by cube bond geometry. The pipeline extracts a shape sampling program from them. Finally, this extracted program will be the training data for the deep generative model, and the model learns to generate novel shape program. This is an example of a shape assembly program and the shape that it generates. Parts are colored according to the line of the program which created them and the attachment points that numbered accordingly. It also shows the hierarchy. And the light grid part back part is expanded to the purple back surface and the gold stats. The right figure illustrates how the shape assembly interprets the construct shapes by executing program commands. Cube wires are instantiated at the origin and are moved through attachment command. The language does not include any operations for explicit positioning or orienting cube wires. All of this is accomplished via attachment operations. The reflect command is a high-level macro that capture more complex spatial relationships such as, such as symmetry. At the execution time, each macro is expanded into a series of cube wire declarations and attachment operations. Here is an example shows how editable and interpretable the program is. Now let's move on to the grammar of the language. The shape sampling program consists of four main blocks. The B block declares the bounding volume of the overall shape. This bounding volume is treated as a physical entity to which other parts can be connected. The C block declares all the cube by the parts. The A block are commands that connects cube bonds and then the S block generates symmetry groups. They are macro commands. To extract the shape assembly program from hierarchical path graphs, they perform a series of data regularizations, record the cuboid parameters, locate the cuboid to cuboid attachments, and identify symmetry groups. The, author, the authors also set some rules to extract only a single canonical program for each shape. Then we need a generative model to learn to produce the shape sampling program. The model is a hierarchical sequence variation autoencoder. 
giving a uh, shape sampling program. The encoder assigns the hierarchy from the leaves to reroute, encoding each subprogram into a latent uh, Z vector. Given a latent code, the decoder recursively decodes a hierarchical shape sampling program within each hierarchy node. The, a recurrent neural network decodes each line of the program. Given the latent code the parent, the decoder uses it to initialize the hidden state of a gated recurrent unit, which is responsible for constructing a representation of the program state. The output of the GR cell is sent to the line decoder, which predicts a line in the shape sampling grammar that is then passed as back to the GRU at the next time step. The submodel F child here is used to generate the hierarchical program. It is executed after every project cuboid command to determine whether mm, that cuboid should be recursively expanded. It takes current uh, hidden state of the GRU as well as the parent as input and returns a Boolean flag and the new latent code Z child. If the boolean flag is true, then the cube file should be expanded, and the day child will be the day parent for the child program. The light decoder uses the hidden state of the GRL cell along with condition information by the size of the current bounding volume to predict a 63 dimensional vector representing a single line in shape sampling. The vector is a combination of these features and numbers are side. To the time limitation, I will not go to details of these features. The line decoder and the F child use multi layer perceptions, the MLP, to predict. The model is trained in a 62 sequence fashion, where the ground truth input sequence is the teacher forced to the model, and the model is tasked with predicting each subsequent line. During training, the program can reconstruction loss only consider entries of the vector that are relevant to the target line. For example, when predicting a cube bound line, the reconstruction loss will not come from the part associated with the symmetry. For the generation, programs that not satisfy the semantic of shape sampling language will be rejected. Now let's move on to the result part. For quantitative link comparisons, there are two baselines. The structure net is a variation of the encoder that generates hierarchical part graphs with a cube bound at each node. The 3D PRN is a recurrent neural network that generates a sequence of coupon. A series of uh, ablated versions of models are also tested. Here they use four matrix to analyze shape quality. Routiness, routiness is a percentage of shape for which a connected path exists. Stability is a percentage of shapes which will remain upright under gravity and small forces in uh, physical simulations. Realism and a free chat distance describe the ability to generate new shapes not from in the training set. While structure net uh, achieves the good rooted in its scores, the new method performs much better in other stream metrics on all calibers, and its rooted in its scores are very close to that of structure net. To analyze program editability, it counts the number of lines and commands. Generally speaking, fewer lines means more understandable and more macros can make the program be more concise, easier to edit. To analyze geometric variability, they compute the average nearest neighbor distance between the generated sample and the training set, the validation set. Across three categories of shapes, the new method performs the best on the coverage and the variety metrics. This figure shows the smooth of the latent space. The interpolation dem demonstrates both geometrically smooth and semantically consistent transitions. Notice that in this line, the surface of the track in the source shape gradually shrinks vertically until in the target shape it is just a, a horizontal bar. And at the same time, the number of vertical stars in the track gradually increase from 2 to 5. The interpolation of structure analysis is seems more discontinuous. However, this generative model also has many limitations. Firstly, the program extraction procedure assumes that the orientation of all parts can be specified through solely part to product attachment. However, this is not held for all shapes. In this figure, the orientation of the arms cannot be inferred from part to product attachment alone. Those shapes are excluded from the dataset and the generator model never learned and cannot produce such type of shapes. 
Secondly, due to the trade-off between variability and quality, the model discard training programs with more than 12 total coupon declarations, many complex programs are never learned. Third, while ShapeAssembly has a strong inductive bias for generating physically connected shapes, it is not guaranteed to do so. This is more likely to happen with very non-axis aligned structures that result in loose bonding coupons. The fourth is that the program only supports the coupon. There are many shapes that the coupon cannot imitate, like in this graph. Um, thank you. That's all for my presentation.